Guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and in this episode, we are talking about the latest arrival from Bitmap Books. Bitmap is the pinnacle of video game history and preservation in book form. The latest addition to the Bitmap library. This is a mighty tome, over 600 pages. The games that weren't, and as the title pretty much implies, this is a, a, a book dedicated to video games that never were completed. They never made it to the consumer level where you could actually go buy them. And it is so incredible and it's jam-packed. I say it's over 600 pages. This is not like a picture book. There are lots of pictures. That's the cool thing. You get to see screenshots for games that were not completed and it, they'll tell you like available to play, yes, or sometimes no. So these games do kind of go on, but this is not just like a picture book. This is filled with interviews, stories, text from the people that worked on these games themselves. This is the story being told by the people who were there. And that's one of the things that I love about bitmap books is it's not, there are writers talking about things like in the rear view, you know, or there is a, it's very journalistic, but if they can talk to the people that worked on the games, they do. And so the level of scholarship, that's really what I like to say about bitmap books is they bring scholarship to video game history and preservation. This book is no exception. Anytime a new bitmap books, like uh addition a new a new title is announced i just i get really excited because i know what they bring i know the the level of quality so with this one first of all can i shout out the art design just the black and the whites and the green is it's it's amazing here are this is the first thing you see when you open the book reasons that video games did not make it to production that they didn't make it to your console or to your arcade. And I mean, everything, look, ran out of time, the publisher changed their mind, licensing, bankruptcy, people died working on these games and the games were just shelved. Here is the contents. This is the, a list of, of what all this book covers. You guys, 40 years of video game history. It starts in 1975. We're talking about pre-Atari 2600 arcade stuff, computer stuff. So the beginning of video games as we know it, all the way up to 2015, PlayStation 4, iOS, there's some iOS games in here, like Android stuff. So we're talking about 40 years of video games. And it's also well-researched, it's also, well there's like chapters, like pages and pages and pages dedicated to just one game and the story behind it. Uh, it is absolutely incredible. I think the best way for us to talk about this, instead of me sitting here just telling you about it, let's take this, put it down on the table, and let's go through it together so we can kind of experience just a little bit of what about what I think makes this so special. So let's head over to the unboxing table and crack open the games that weren't. All right, let's do this thing. I've already shouted out the design, but it is just such a gorgeous book. Look, forward by David Crane, uh, and the welcome, this is the author, Frank Gasking is the author of this book, and uh, he is the founder of the games that weren't. This is a pre-existing organization prior to this book. What Bitmap Books does is they connect an expert in a field, so many times they connect an expert in a field like Frank Gasking with uh, this presentation. So they're giving him a platform to talk about his expertise. And I think that's really cool. Starts in 1975. Uh, I mean, just look, so much text. We're talking about games that predate, you know, these are like pre Atari arcade games. The Atari Game Brain. This was in development at the same time of the Atari 2600. And they ended up just shifting to the Atari 2600. So this never never saw the light of day but it's here's the design here's the prototype model for it. it's fascinating stuff look they give you the name of the game they give you the reason it was canceled the year the developer and the platform it was going to be on they also tell you if it's available to play yes or no and so many times it actually is available to play you know there's different ways you could do that but also it's frustrating that some of these games are just lost forever. <laughs> no fun factor for Wolfpack for the Atari Arcade. 
and as you can see like we're not going to go page by page but just so much text and that's the it's the research it's the stories behind these games that make them uh, that to me makes this special because it's not just a photo book you know i say it's it's not just pictures of what could have been look the vectrex we have vectrex games in here and then when the vectrex failed it just was not meant to be there's a there's a charlie chaplin game in here i don't know if we're going to get to see it at the rate i'm kind of clipping through here but uh here's behind that what which game is this this is millipede um, that was going to be uh, the Atari 2600, and here's the story about the whole thing. Here's pictures of the, the like the developments, research area, and their workstations here. This is really really cool for for the people that love not just playing video games, ch starring Charlie Chaplin. Uh, for the people that don't just love playing video games, but love the history and how it's done, how it's made. This is invaluable stuff. The Atari ST and the Commodore 64 developer financial woes. What would it available to play? Yes. What would that game look like? Well, you get to find out. You get the story of the game. Here's some mock-ups. This is like the original sketch of what it would have looked like. Here's a, a mock-up of the what the game would look like. The the box art. Man, <laughs> just love this stuff. Commodore 64, The Last Ninja Delays. This would have been on so many different platforms. I'll speed up. We get into the Nintendo era. Look, here's a game, NARC. This started out as USSA, and it shifted to NARC over time, which was an arcade game that I enjoyed when I was a kid. I felt like I was like getting away with something. Um, so it covers a lot of ground, and look at this. Hard driving. The publisher canceled it. It was going to be on the Nintendo. Some of these games are for systems that, uh, they, like, like a shift, uh, a system switch, a shift of system switch system shift that's what we're trying to find uh so like water world there was going to be a playstation version of water world and a uh hey by the way does this guy look like dwight schrute brie camera person dwight schrute yes i'm getting i'm getting yep um space fantasy zone would have been a combination between fantasy zone and space harrier for the pc engine look the commodore 65 what would that have looked like that right there Oh man, this is one I specifically wanted to talk about if I can get back. The Green Lantern, they were going to do a Green Lantern game. Atari ST, Commodore, Amiga, Sega, Mega Drive, and the Super Nintendo. Now the Mega Drive would be the, the, the different different names and different, uh, this is a UK book. So available to play? No. But frustratingly, they have so many assets for this game. Look, here's screenshots that were taken from you know, the development of the game. They have, if I can get this page to turn. They have like the cutscene, like here's part of the, the animation, cutscene graphic. Here's all the the character sprites for Green Lantern, his different animation. You know, it just it's there. It exists. It was done. But this game does not exist. Look at this. This was tragic. Eye of the Moon, the developer passed away. So the Panasonic Jungle changes in the market 2011. As you can see, this is just an incredible book it's an incredible resource and there's honorable mentions in the back things that didn't get a full write-up or a full review uh star wars ewok adventure in 1983 from parker brothers i wish like i want to play that um so it's it's great it's an absolutely stunning book i'm gonna throw it back to heath in a studio shot by the way glossary of terms if you don't know what a bit is well, here it is. You can learn what a bit is. <laughs> so I'm going to throw it back to Heath in the studio. Heath of Earth 2, I guess. Or my Heath of Earth 2. Heath, alternate Heath, take it away. Guys, isn't it amazing? I told you that Bitmap Books is just like a pinnacle of quality. This is actually not the first Bitmap Books title that we've talked about. We have videos dedicated to Micro But Mini, which is, as you guessed it, it's all about micro machines. And we also have a video dedicated to the Atari 2600 7800, a visual compendium. This is screenshots from Atari games. This is box art from Atari games and lots of stories from Atari employees from back in the day. So joining the library now is the games that weren't. I love it. I love the design. I love how sleek it is. I love that Bitmap Books connects with people who have already established, you know, in this case, the games that weren't, 
that's an established uh, brand already. You know, like 20 years of um, of, of archiving, of pres uh, preserving, of, of keeping this history. Bitmap Books finds the right people for the right titles and they present them like this for you and I. Uh, it's it's amazing stuff. So I'm gonna put a link to where you can buy this in the description of this video. Bitmap Books is a company out of the United Kingdom, but if you order anywhere else, I gotta tell you, my stuff comes from Bitmap in a matter of days. It's like international shipping, and like I'm talking like two, three days. I don't know that your, yours will come exactly that quickly, but my experience has been, I mean, it's like, it's like a cup of coffee and it's there. It's incredible customer service. The people behind the scenes are just the nicest, the coolest, and the best. So I think we should support people that are doing that kind of work, who bring their love of stuff. This is a small team, and they're clearly very invested in this with their um, with their livelihood. You know, this is what they do. This is their passion. This is what they love. The games that weren't is available now. Thank you to Bitmap Books for sending this to me so I could review this for you and more importantly, so I could show it to you and hopefully get you fired up about what I appreciate about this too. So guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If you do grab it, I want to know about it. I want to know what you're excited about as far as video games and preservation. Have you picked up any of the other Bitmap Books titles? That playlist, again, I'm going to link to it. It'll be at the end of this video as well and in the description of this video. Guys, thanks so much. Take care. And until next time, I will catch you later.